In these videos, I use chemicals that can cause burns and respiratory problems. If you are to replicate any of the experiments or procedures shown in my videos, please do so in a fume hood or outside, and please wear suitable gloves when handling acids. Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this nitric acid using a mixture of sodium bisulfate and potassium nitrate. For this experiment, I'll be using a simple distillation set. Also, from left to right, I'll be using a gas washing bottle to collect excess nitrogen dioxide gas, a check valve to prevent violent suck back from the gas washing bottle into the receiving flask, a graduated cylinder and heavy liquid hydrometer to measure the specific gravity of the nitric acid produced, a Vigru column for removing excess water from the acid, and finally, some sodium bisulfate and potassium nitrate. So let's get started. In these containers, I have 120 grams of sodium bisulfate and 100 grams of potassium nitrate. The first thing I like to do is mix the two dry reagents together thoroughly. Once they're mixed, I throw the whole mixture into the boiling flask. When you heat sodium bisulfate and potassium nitrate, the initial reaction produces gaseous nitric acid. However, concentrated nitric acid is unstable when heated and it undergoes thermal decomposition. This means that some of the gaseous nitric acid breaks down into nitrogen dioxide, oxygen and water vapor. The nitric acid that remains in gaseous form is condensed in the condenser while the nitrogen dioxide gas escapes and is directed to the gas washing bottle. In the gas washing bottle, nitrogen dioxide reacts with water to form nitric acid and nitric oxide, which exits as a gas. By adding hydrogen peroxide to the distilled water in the gas washing bottle, you could also capture the nitric oxide gas, improving the nitric acid yield. For maximum absorption of gas in the gas washing bottle, Use cold water and an ice bath to keep the water cool. You could also add hydrogen peroxide to the water to capture any undissolved nitrogen dioxide. For this experiment, I'm only using distilled water. Here's a closer look at what's happening inside the boiling flask. Inside the distillation flask, sodium bisulfate and potassium nitrate are combined to form nitric acid in gaseous form. The byproduct potassium bisulfate remains as a solid residue. Here, you can see the condensed nitric acid dripping into the receiving flask. The reaction is complete when you see one drop in around every 10 seconds. And finally, in the gas washing bottle, you can see the brown nitrogen dioxide gas dissolving into the water. If brown nitrogen dioxide fumes are escaping the water, you can add hydrogen peroxide or cool the solution further to increase gas absorption. Once the reaction is complete, you'll be left with a solid chunk of potassium bisulfate. This is soluble in hot water and will take a few rinses to remove from the flask. Be sure to allow it to cool for a while before adding the water to prevent the flask from breaking. I've done this reaction four times, and in total, it's taken around three hours. Let's take a look at the acids I've collected and test their specific gravities. Here is the acid from the receiving flask. You will notice it is very orange in color. This means it contains dissolved nitrogen dioxide. This doesn't affect the acid, but it can be cleared up if desired. And here is the acid from the gas washing bottle. You will notice it is very blue in color. This suggests the presence of dissolved nitrogen oxides. When nitrogen dioxide dissolves in water, it primarily forms nitric acid, but it can also produce some nitrous acid. If the system is oxygen poor, more nitric oxide might be present. Dissolved nitric oxide can react with water to form blue nitrocell complexes, giving a blue tint to the solution. Over the four runs, I have managed to collect 100 milliliters of nitric acid, meaning each distillation yielded around 25 milliliters of nitric acid. The specific gravity of this acid is measuring at 1.48. 
When checked on the chart, you'll notice this acid is around 75%. The acid from the gas washing bottle is measuring at around 1.25. If we check this one on the chart, it says it is around 45%, which is quite a good yield. I've now combined both solutions and placed them back onto the hot plate. I've added the Vigru column, and I'm going to remove some of the water. This is also going to help to drive off the nitrogen oxides and should leave me with a nice clear acid. After not too long at all, all of the unwanted nitrogen oxides have been driven off and water is rapidly boiling off and condensing. After removing 100 milliliters of water, I'm checking to make sure acid isn't also being boiled over. It is, so I'll stop the distillation. If you want to ensure there are no impurities in your acid, you can switch back to a simple distillation at this point and distill the remaining acid. I'll keep this fraction of the acid, which is only around 5%, and I'll add it to the gas washing bottle the next time I need to make nitric acid. Now let's take a look at the acid I've collected. After boiling off some of the water, I have around 250 milliliters of nitric acid. This acid has a specific gravity of 1.3. The acid is still hot, but it won't change the result that much. Looking again at the chart, it shows that the acid is around 55%. A cooler solution is more dense, which could actually put the acid at 60%. I could have gotten a better separation of water if I had added a second Vigro column or been a bit more careful with the temperature. This acid, though, is good enough for what I'll be using it for. If you would like to see this acid in action, why not check out my last video titled Recovering Gold from My Filter Papers. In that video, I also used some homemade hydrochloric acid. But out of curiosity, was making the acid myself cheaper than buying it? Let's do some math. I used 480 grams of sodium bisulfate. This worked out at £3.20. I also used 400 grams of potassium nitrate at a cost of £3.60. This gives a total cost of £6.80 for 250 milliliters. If we multiply that by 4, it works out at £27.20 20 per litre. Looking online, I managed to find a bottle of 55% nitric acid for £14.53. But even with the cheapest delivery, after tax, it would cost £29.99. So for an afternoon of work, I managed to make it cheaper than I could buy it, and I had it the same day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.